So uh, I have counted at least 30 pregnant women who have traveled with me on my last flight from London to Warsaw. And this is the image uh, in which a Polish, a Polish obstetrician uh, encapsulated the still strong attraction the home's country, um, the home country's healthcare system exercises on Polish migrant women in, in uh, Europe. Uh, this remark was made during a debate about the recently introduced law on the standards of maternity care in Poland that I had attended in September last year. As the consultant explained to us, the Polish pregnant women who presumably were living in the UK but traveling to consult the obstetrician back in Poland, um, sorry, uh, so the, the consultant explained to us that these uh, Polish women were presumably living in the UK but they decided to travel back to uh, consult their obstetricians. Uh, they were doing so not because maternity healthcare services were not available to them in the country of residence, but as suggested, uh, because they considered the Polish healthcare system uh, more reli reliable than the British one. So, to this remark, the Polish Minister of Health present at the debate immediately responded in a very enthusiastic manner, expressing her satisfaction that not everyone thinks the Polish healthcare system is bad. Um, and that there are people who think uh, that Polish healthcare uh, services are better than the other ones, uh, and this presumably in the Western countries. So, uh, these two remarks made during the debate point to two issues. First, uh, to the commonly shared belief among Polish people that healthcare services are more developed in the, uh, in the West, while they remain in the state of underdevelopment in the East. And second, uh, to the importance of the transnational migratory space that has uh, developed um, recently um, and plays a, a great role in the reconfiguration of the Polish uh, healthcare system. So, uh, the aim of this paper is to present this transnational uh, space created by the healthcare practices among Polish women living in Ireland. Um, this presentation is based on fieldwork conducted in 2010 and 2011 for my PhD research among Polish female migrants in Ireland and Poland. It addresses the twofold question uh, of first how medicalization is played out institutionally in the process of migration and second, if and how uh, migrant women seek to resist it when engaging with healthcare in the host and home countries. Um, the interviews were focused mainly on the Polish and Irish obstetric and maternity services and explored the ways Polish women use these services in the home and host countries. So, uh, most of the literature addressing uh, medical approaches to women's health depicts Western, me uh, Western medicine as more medicalizing and controlling women's bodies than the non-Western medical settings. So women coming from less developed countries or communities are often described as rather suspicious towards what is seen to be um, more technologized Western biomedicine. And they are often seen as more willingly engaging with folk or alternative healthcare. Uh, in this presentation, however, I will argue that Polish migrant women living in Ireland not only very strongly re rely on biomedicine, they often perceive Irish healthcare, especially maternity services, as less advanced than the Polish ones. Thus, they in a way reverse the commonly perceived opposition between the underdeveloped East and the technologized West uh, by viewing Irish maternity services as magical in a way backward and insufficient. Uh, this study is an attempt to open a window towards larger questions related to the play between larger institutional context and the local configuration of biomedical regimes. Uh, just within this uh, few years since 2004, the number of Polish people who migrated to Ireland grows significantly and although the exact numbers are hard to determine, a last census um, from 2011 showed that there is over 115,000 Polish people 
living at the moment in Ireland. And in response to a growing demand um, among members of the Polish community in Ireland, over the last few years, several medical uh, clinics run by Polish doctors and nurses started to operate in Dublin. Whereas all uh, offer fee for service consultations with different uh, Polish medical specialists, some of them offer also services contracted with the AGC and they are free at the, point of the, at the point of delivery. And this is, for example, a maternity scheme services. Since its appearance a couple of years ago, these clinics became widely used among members of the Polish community. And for mighty Polish, uh, they became the easiest and the quickest way to consult a specialist or talk to the doctor in the native language. For many Polish women who became pregnant in Ireland, these clinics are the easiest way to, um, to access services that are not offered in the Irish uh, public healthcare system under the free maternity and infant scheme or are offered only under, spe uh, under special circumstances. In Ireland, the um, overwhelming majority of Polish women um, have the right to free maternity services under the maternity and infant scheme and only few, uh, none of the women I talked to decided to go this, um, choose this way for caring for the pregnancy and all women uh, I talked to during my field work visited the Polish clinic at least once um, during their pregnancy with overwhelming um, majority seeing Polish doctors on a regular um, basis. Some of these women pay for each visit and the prices start from around 130 euro per visit with um, ultrasound discount or they combine uh, free of charge maternity scheme a pay and pay only for um, additional tests for ultrasound scans. In addition, some women choose to use uh, healthcare services when traveling back to Poland and by engaging with both the Polish and Irish healthcare system, Polish women seem to seek and receive more rather than less medical supervision and control. The picture of the Irish and Polish healthcare system that started to emerge so far from the interviews is full of contradictions and ambiguities. On the one hand, women complain about the Polish healthcare system and perceive it as hostile and corrupted. On the other, they find it very difficult to rely only on the Irish one and often see it as insufficient and too light-hearted. So there are two main aspects that migrant women value most in healthcare. And first is a proficient use of medical technology and specialist care. Uh, second, a respectful relation with the healthcare personnel. Healthcare offered by the Polish doctors seem to fulfill the first demand, uh, which is medical technology. The second need seem to be fulfilled by the services, offer, services offered by the Irish healthcare system. Many Polish women living in Ireland are dissatisfied with the services provided by the Irish GPs. They believe that Polish doctors are usually of much bigger help than the Irish GPs. They often, are, they often express opinions that although nice and friendly, some GPs are just uneducated and simply lack the adequate medical skills. To depict this, medical, uh, this lack of medical education, Women tell anecdotes of GPs typing in the symptoms and checking on the internet plausible diagnosis or recommending waiting. So, for example, the cough will stop by itself or the fever will go away. As a result, many Polish women talk about going to the Polish clinic to check what the, uh, whether they really have what the Irish uh, doctor had diagnosed. Um, it seems that Polish women prefer to go to a Polish specialist than to see an Irish GP um, because according to them, uh, they have, GPs just have general knowledge and may not be knowledgeable enough to advise them on their very particular problems. Uh, so as an overwhelming majority of Polish doctors working in Ireland have specialization in certain medical fields for example, dermatology, gynecology or pediatrics, Polish women often say that it makes more sense for them to go uh, to a particular specialist than to see a um, GP. 
However, uh, happy or not with the medical knowledge and skill of Irish physicians, the overwhelming majority of Polish women stress that the Irish healthcare personnel is very nice, friendly and friendly towards their patients. Uh, these pictures of the friendly hospital staff is very often con uh, constructed in opposition to the situation of the Polish wards. So when talking about Irish healthcare personnel, Polish women often contrast them with uh, the Polish colleagues. One of the participants uh, in my study, a Polish woman in her late 20s who lives in Ireland and who has recently given birth to a baby boy, uh, explained to me, and I quote, But we, here people in the hospital are very friendly, very helpful, and whatever you want, you will get it. There is no such thing that they will refuse you something. Whatever you want, you will get it. No one was rude, no one, and nothing was refused to me. Everything was happening in a positive atmosphere. And in Poland, nobody asks you whether they can do this or that, whether they can examine you. Here, every time they would ask me and explain to me what and why they were doing. End of quote. Another woman descri described her experience in an Irish maternity hospital with the phrase Here they treat you like an egg, indicating the great care and concern healthcare personnel showed her uh, during the labour and the subsequent stay in the hospital. So this is the friendly atmosphere and support from the healthcare personnel that women most often put stress on when talking about their status, stays in the hospital. Some women go even that far to say that they will be very reluctant to give birth in Poland after having such a positive experience with the Irish healthcare staff. However, at the same time, many Polish women assess Irish maternity services as rather careless and light-hearted and express opinions that they do not find them reassuring. Fewer number of tests and only two ultrasound scans during pregnancy are the main complaints, but Polish women also seem to be concerned with the lack of gynecological or obstetrical supervision during unproblematic pregnancies. They talk about the Irish attitude towards pregnancy as cold or relying on natural selection when the strongest survive and the weakest is left for the nature to decide. Um, one of the participants who during her pregnancy regularly visited a Polish gynecologist working in one of the Polish clinics in Dublin explained to me, and I quote, I knew how the consultation at the hospital looked like and going to the GP is not a real consultation for me. In the hospital up until the 30th week they measure your belly, take your urine sample and check your pressure. And there is only one scan, that's it. The magical touching of my belly in the 37th week was not enough for me to believe that everything is all right. They are not doing any scans. They don't do. They they, they, they sorry. They, and they do not check anything. Maybe this cold attitude is good, but they don't. So they don't panic and stress about things. But for me, it's not assuring. So the phrase magical hands or magical touching suggesting the Irish a somehow less scientific approach to monitoring the pregnancy reoccurs in many interviews. One of the participants uh, who reported going to the Polish gynecologist for a regular checkup sum up her opinion on Irish healthcare system by saying they love instance, they just like dinosaurs here. So the notion of coolness and panic is also very often used among uh, Polish women to describe the Irish and Polish attitudes in healthcare towards the pregnancy. The Irish approach is seen as cool and calm. Women talk about the Irish healthcare personnel as not spreading a needle of panic and assuring their patients that everything is and will be fine. On the other hand, the Polish healthcare personnel is often depicted by Polish women as spreading anxiety and fear and more willing to warn patients of possible dangers than assure them that everything will be fine. These opinions on the Polish and Irish healthcare and maternity services become even more interesting when put in the context of the relation between the East and the West. 
Polish obstetric and maternity healthcare has rather poor reputation among Poles. Several initiatives uh, that have emerged over the last decades in order to improve the situation of maternity wards point at indifference among healthcare personnel and disempowerment of women as main problems experienced by the mothers to be. Internet discussion forums are full of stories told by women of how they have been mistreated by hospital staff, how they have been deprived of dignity and the right to the accurate information. Healthcare personnel is often depicted as exercising unlimited power and ignoring, ignoring patients' rights. All of these women express longing for the normal, that is to say what they see as Western um, standards of the medical care. In their stories, the West is often seen as the golden standard that Poland has yet to achieve, an obstetric paradise where hospital staff is full of empathy and words are packed with the newest medical equipment. Polish obstetric words, on the other hand, are often still as backward and remaining in the past. My research shows that in the case of Polish women living in Ireland, the commonly perceived opposition between the underdeveloped East and technologized West is in a way reversed. And although in terms of respect towards patients, Ireland undoubtedly enjoys very positive opinions among Polish women, when it comes to the use of medical technology in specialist care, Irish maternity services are labelled as less scientific or even magical. Um, these contrasted pictures of the Polish and Irish healthcare services makes us wonder about the nature of the forces shaping these two biomedical regimes and the ways the latter regular women's bodies and pregnancy. What are the main factors that, on the one hand, in Ireland favour the policy of minimal intervention and coldness during pregnancy, and on the other, in Poland resulted in close medical supervision, high number of tests and the approach to pregnancy described by many women as full of unrest and anxiety. Why is that so many Polish women complain about being mistreated or treated without respect uh, by the healthcare personnel, and none of them, uh, um, none of the women I talked in Ireland had any objections to the bedside manners of the Irish hospital staff. Many social scientists indicate that in Poland, women's health had been very strongly influenced by the collapse of the socialist regime and the growing power of neoliberalism and the privatization of the healthcare. Other studies highlight the power of the Catholic Church in informing institutional developments and in influencing policies regulating women's health. Well, ironically, the same macro, uh, two macro-level factors, neoliberalism and the Catholic Church, have also been mentioned as having played a major role in the shape um, currently taken by the Irish healthcare system. So, however, keeping ourselves on the macro-level would not help us <coughs> investigate the differences between the Irish and Polish biomedical regimes. Indeed, Ireland and Poland both consider strongly Catholic countries and under the strong influence of neoliberal economy, develop different biomedical approaches to regulating women's bodies and monitoring the pregnancy. This indicates that we need to get one step lower an inquiry into the particular institutional substantions of neoliberalism and the Catholic Church in the two settings.
the Irish people are very laid back about healthcare, and we would, as a Polish people, are more focused on healthcare, and they're more, they want more investigations, more blood tests in their pregnant, more scans, and they can't understand why we don't offer as, as many same blood tests, the same scans, as the Polish healthcare services. So that's, the, that's one of the main goals of contention from people I've interviewed. But, uh, you, but do, do, uh, can you, um, did they mention anything else about, like, uh, any other aspects of care that they felt over medicalized in Ireland or in Poland? Uh, you mean other, uh, except the pregnancy? Yeah. Um, <coughs> did they mention smear tests or anything like that? Because they said smear tests, so why can't cancer screening? Well, um, Not really, like, yeah. yeah. My focus was on pregnancy. In, ter um, in terms of smear test, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different topic because what happens in Poland is that almost every woman, especially if we're talking about middle class uh, women, um, will have her own gynecologist. And primary care is completely excluded from um, women's health. Women's health is completely excluded from primary care. So, um, one thing would be that uh, this, there is no access, in Poland there is a direct access to gynecologists and obstetricians. Here it goes through the uh, GP referral and there is no, uh, and also Poland has the uh, network of private clinics, very popular. So this is the main difference and this smear test thing is um, very often it's done usually once a year, it's recommended to be done once a year, and it's within this framework of uh, private happiness, private practices very often. Okay. So this is, um, yeah, and uh, Polish women would say, yes, Irish system is very well back, and um, um, they don't really do those tests. <laughs> Do you, do you know, um, is there any difference between the C-section rates between Ireland and Poland? Similar, very similar. Very similar. Uh, it's about 30 percent, I think. Um, Poland, uh, there is, yes, um, uh, from, from women. Well, the percentages are very similar. It's about 30 percent. Um, from when we talking to with, uh, talking with women, they would always, they would, very often say that you will get a C-section faster in Poland than, the, 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 than you will get in Ireland. So the uh, common idea is that in Ireland they will wait longer than in Poland. How do birth rates compare to the Republic Birth rates. The birth rates, yeah. Is the birth rate in Poland higher or lower? Oh no, we have very low uh, birth rates. Uh, Ireland has higher birth rates than Poland, but it's a general trend uh, of the eastern countries and southeast countries that we have very low uh, birth rate. Um, however, um, there is some research done that would indicate that women living in Ireland and the UK tend to have more children than the women living, at the same age living in, uh, in Poland. So I, I presume the birth rate here was probably higher than Poland. So would that affect the fact that people are perhaps more laid back if people have more babies here? I mean, it could be as simple as that. Um, you know, we, we talk, I'm talking with, usually with young women and there, there's their first or second pregnancy. So, um, you know, it's, You know, this person who is actually woman who is pregnant is for his first experience for her. So that's why you, we intend to say, oh, this is my second or third pregnancy, so I'm more relaxed. But uh, I, I presume that doctors are seeing, you know, the same number of women in Poland as they are seeing in Ireland. Okay, well, maybe one more, Ronnie. Um, okay. Uh, I think the structures are different. There are, there, there are no GPs or fewer GPs. They tend to go to specialists in Poland, is not one. So that yes. was a, a significant variant on. Yes, well, the idea of a GP is a new idea 
in Poland it has been introduced um, uh, in 1999 when the universal healthcare uh, insurance um, have been introduced. So yes, uh, there is um, there is this different. The, the idea of the GP is quite different, but the main thing is that GPs in Poland are completely excluded from the care. Um, but, okay, that's that's not my question. My question actually is. Um, I, I, if I heard you correctly, I don't know if I did or not. You referred to, you said to the women, referring to biomedicine as magical. Is that right? Did you, did you say? Yes, they would refer it to Irish. Um, very often, uh, in my interviews, the phrase "magical hands" or uh, you know "magical touching of my belly" uh, very often appeared, and um, that that refers to Irish biomedicine. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I find that very, very interesting, and I think you're onto something there, actually, because if you look at the, the the criticism of biomedicine is that it's been anything but magical. Mm -hmm. It has been heavily scientific, positivistic, and all the rest of it. And the magical is the other, you know, the folk medicine and so on. Um, but I do, I think you're onto something there, actually. I think, I think it's yeah, but they do refer. They, they see Irish biomedicine is more magical. And this whole idea of touching, you know, yeah. and checking um, through through touching the belly is yeah. very often. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, thanks again to Maria for a really interesting transnational perspective. So we, we are.